Hey, welcome back to the channel where uh, you get to watch me build a Minimax 1100R. And um, this is uh, what I'm working on. You saw we got these epoxied in place um, the last episode. So I wanted to say um, uh, thank you to uh, Broken Buzzards World of Flying. Um, for the uh, for the tip, it was a really good one. So what I've done is uh, I've taken a line here. What what I like about this particular method is um, it's going to guarantee that I have a really straight straight edge in case it's slightly off. I know I'm probably splitting hairs at this point, but that's okay. Um, so this this line that runs between the two points of where my the front of my landing gear is going to be. Is uh, it allowed me to put a uh, perpendicular line using a square? Um, I had a framing square here, and what I have planned here is I'm going to remove some of this material um, just to get it down a little bit thinner. I'm going to use my my router here, and what I did is I took a measurement from the back edge of the router to the router bit. And then I just figured I added about a little less than an eighth of an inch um, back from that. Uh, I went a little that much further back. Uh, let's see, how can I explain this? I want to make sure I get this right. So the line that I drew allows me to use this straight edge of the router and push it against my metal here. And you can see I've got that much of a gap, um, just a little less than an eighth of an inch. And so the router bit will take that much material off of here as I run along the fence here that I've created. And I'm just using some heavy steel bars. I, I don't, I can't really push those if I'm going, if I really dig into it, I can, but there won't be any reason to do that. So, um, so I'm gonna take equal amount off of both sides and uh, just to uh, thin it down a little bit. And I think that'll be, uh, that'll be a lot cleaner. So I'll get, uh, get plugged in here so we can, so we can do yeah. this, see how this goes. All right, so one of the next things that I have to do is I, I have to make a, uh, um, we're gonna get the axle set up. And in order to do that, we have to, uh, we need a B block. So we're just gonna set this, uh, set up this V block here so that we've got something to use on the drill press to get our holes centered. So first thing we'll do here is get this, uh, just get ourselves a line. Doesn't really matter where. I'm just getting somewhere near the center, so. <clears throat> and then we'll just pick a pick a point for a 45 degree. Um, be here and I think maybe halfway through the block should be good so let's see it like that like so and then when we get over to the table saw here we'll be able to use uh, We'll 
set the blade to a 45 and, uh, and then I'll run this through one way and then flip it around and go the other way and then we'll have a uh, we'll have a we'll cut out this V right here So now you can see we got a nice uh, got a nice V groove here, and we'll we'll use that to uh, to drill our uh, drill our holes. And now we'll go uh, we'll go from here and uh, I'll get the axle. And what we'll need to do is figure out. Uh, from the overall length, what the width here was supposed to be, how much did we add? So let's see if we can go to the drawing. All right, so basically this, this worked out like I, like I kind of thought. Um, overall, I'm a quarter inch wider. Um, which makes sense. I mean, we have about an eighth of an inch of material here um, outside. So, so I'm only a quarter inch, so I'm gonna actually make my axle um, 58 and a quarter. And then we will uh, we'll create a center line on it, and then we'll work everything off the center line just like we are doing here. So, 58 and a quarter. And then, uh, This dimension where it's 24 to the hole, it'll be 24 and an eighth. And this, uh, obviously 29 is half, but we'll be 29 and an eighth. So first I'll get that cut to 58 and a quarter and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. All right. And we just measure from both sides to make sure that we're right on and we're good. So we we'll actually just make a little scratch here. So I don't lose track of that.
Now what we want to do is we want to get a line on here that uh, runs um, all the way from uh, end to end so that we can uh, work off that in a, uh, make sure you can see me over here. A good way to do that is to just use your, uh, use your edge on your table here. So from the center, we're going inch and a half, um, inch and a half each way. This, this one I don't really have to change the dimension of because uh, this is going to be a custom fit anyway. So for the aluminum, I'll keep it in the middle. I'll keep it at the same distance. We're in um, inch and a half. Now all we have to do is, um, since we have this nice line, since we have this nice line here that runs all the way down, if you can see that line, maybe you can, uh, maybe right there you can see it, it runs all the way down the pipe, and it's, uh, it's nice and straight from one end to the other, so... Now we just get in here right on the line and we'll and we use our center punch and we make our hole where we make the we punch it where we want our hole and <laughs> put it that way all right <clears throat> and then the next hole is going to be at uh, 24 and 8. Twenty four and an eight. And then we're going to make a, go ahead and punch that in while we're here. And we're going to go the other way. Do the same. And we'll just do a quick double check. Uh, 24 and an 8. Into that hole. Um, we are an inch and a half apart in the center. And then 24 and an 8. In the center. 24 and an 8. All right. Now we'll get the uh, get the drill press set up. All right. So let me explain the uh, setup to you here. Uh, so we've got our we got our V block that we made, and um, where we go 
from there is you get it you just get it centered on your uh, on your your drill press plate make sure we're getting tight here and then you make sure that your drill bit is centered on the V like so and then when you put your uh, when you put your piece in here that you've already pre-punched all you have to do is if you slide it in and you just have to get on your on your punch mark and then you're confident that that uh, you're going to be able to drill straight through the pipe um, the way you need to so uh, the clamps uh, that keep getting those like really nice and tight so nothing moves is probably the most important part so nothing shifts on you so as long as you get started centered on your line <clears throat> you're gonna come out the exact opposite side of the tube right where you need to so and once we get out to this tip here we'll be supporting the pipe out here with a with one of my uh, one of my roller stands um, just so we don't have to fight to keep it uh, keep it in the block so okay let's drill a couple holes So then you just end up with uh, really nice holes that are, you know, coming out the same location where they need to on the back side. And uh, yeah, now I'm going to switch the uh, bit out. I'll get the quarter inch, three sixteenths in the middle here, and then uh, where we're out here, um, out here we're a uh, quarter inch. So I'll get to, I'll get that set up here. And. See, it just really helps a lot if you can support this, uh, support it out there when you're trying to go all the way to the other end here. Um, so that'll keep that right where it needs to be. I don't have to worry about it um, or fight it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, let's switch this bit out. All right, so I'm just trying to get, uh, <clears throat> trying to try out clip chains here. And so I was just getting this like assembled a little bit. Now that we're in a position where we can actually do this. All right, so thanks for hanging out with me. I do uh, appreciate it as always. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, I invite you to hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you don't miss any of my episodes. And uh, hey, I hope you're all well, and I will catch you later.